Hey everyone, Brandon Lee here with Virtualization How To. And today we're diving into a head to head comparison of two virtualization giants, Nutanix and VMware, in 2024. Both platforms are top notch enterprise solutions, but which one is right for your business or your home lab? Well, stick around to find out. Now a word about the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Nakivo. Are you looking for a powerful and reliable backup solution for your home lab or enterprise environment? Look no further than Nakivo Backup and Replication. Nakivo is an excellent data protection software that offers comprehensive backup and recovery options and lets you use your NAS or a simple VM deployment as a backup appliance. Nakivo supports a wide range of environments, including Proxmox VE, VMware, Hyper-V, Nutanix, KVM, and EC2 instances, along with SaaS platforms like Microsoft 365. Plus, they offer a free version for up to 10 VMs, and that makes it an ideal choice for both home lab setups and enterprise backups. Before we jump into the details, let's briefly introduce these two powerhouses in the virtualization space. Nutanix is known for its hyper-converged infrastructure solutions. It simplifies data center operations by integrating the storage, the compute, and networking into a single system. Strength for some can be an Achilles heel for others, since you can't, as of right now, connect Nutanix to traditional storage solutions like your traditional SAN. I do think that Nutanix will release a standalone hypervisor at some point in the near future. And I think if they do, it could be a death blow to VMware right now in the enterprise with prices that have skyrocketed 10 to 15 X for some customers. On the other hand, VMware has been a leader in virtualization for years. They boast some 70 million plus VMs running in enterprises across the world, at least according to their statistics. They offer a broad range of products that cover everything from data center virtualization to cloud management and automation, network virtualization, software-defined storage, and other solutions like disaster recovery. I think VMware is the best of the best. You can load it on just about anything as long as it doesn't have a real technique, as many of us know, in the home lab. And it runs with either traditional storage or you can configure it as an HCI solution with VMware vSAN. Now, let's look at what Nutanix and VMware have brought to the table in 2024. Nutanix continues to innovate with its AHV hypervisor, which has become a strong contender against VMware ESXi, and Nutanix's focus on simplicity and performance is evidence in their new features like advanced AI-driven operations and enhanced disaster recovery capabilities. Their Nutanix cloud platform now offers seamless integration with major public clouds, making hybrid cloud deployments easier than ever. VMware, not to be outdone, has introduced several key updates in 2024. Their flagship hypervisor, VMware vSphere 8.x, now includes improved Kubernetes integration, making it a powerful platform for modern containerized applications. VMware's multi-cloud strategy is also in full swing with VMware Cloud Foundation, offering comprehensive cloud management across AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. Now their enterprise solutions are not to be outdone as well. You've got VMware vSAN Max that maximizes the capabilities and features offered by VMware vSAN in the enterprise or on-premises data center, as well as many other enhancements in 8.0, Update 2, and the subsequent releases and updates. Let's think about performance and scalability. I want to say this, that when it comes to performance and scalability, both platforms are what you would expect from something that is built for the enterprise. They both perform well, and they're both scalable. Now, I know both vendors are going to throw their numbers at the other, but when it comes down to it, either platform is going to perform very, very well, especially with today's modern flash storage. Now, Nutanix distributed architecture helps with high performance and scalability. The platform's ability to handle mixed workloads with ease makes it ideal for businesses looking to consolidate their infrastructure 
and let's face it, many are headed towards ACI today. Nutanix also excels in providing seamless scale-out experiences, allowing you to add resources without downtime in the Nutanix AHV cluster. Now, when it comes to VMware performance, VMware has an extremely mature ecosystem. It offers robust performance for enterprise workloads. The introduction of vSphere with Tanzu has bolstered its capabilities with modern applications. vSphere DRS, or Distributed Resource Scheduler, and vMotion continue to provide unparalleled flexibility and performance optimizations, as has been seen with vSphere 8.x. Either platform is going to perform, and I think it's kind of like splitting hairs between the two if you're wanting to run mission-critical production workloads. Now, what about management and usability? Well, management and usability are critical factors when choosing a virtualization platform. Let's first talk about Nutanix management. Nutanix Prism is the Nutanix solution that is the web interface that simplifies management tasks. And it has AI-driven operations that can automatically detect and remediate issues. It helps to reduce the operational burden on IT teams. Nutanix one-click upgrades and ease of use make it a favorite in the enterprise for those that are already on Nutanix solutions. And it provides the enterprise look and feel that you would expect from a solution that you're going to run production workloads on. VMware's vCenter remains the familiar and powerful management tool that we're all familiar with. And with the vCenter interface, you can integrate the vRealize suite, now VMware Aria, that enhances automation and monitoring capabilities. And while VMware's interface can be a bit more complex, I would say, versus the Nutanix Prism interface, it does provide comprehensive features that administrators and vSphere admins have grown to appreciate now for decades. Now let's talk about the main reason that we are even comparing these two vendors in 2024, and that is cost and licensing. Cost is always a crucial consideration. It doesn't matter what kind of features that a solution brings to the table. If it's just outrageously priced, then most organizations are going to have to take a step back. Let's first talk about Nutanix pricing. Nutanix pricing model is fairly straightforward with a subscription-based approach that includes both support and updates. And we all know that most vendors are headed this direction. The subscription model or consumption model can simplify budgeting and help to reduce the upfront costs that we used to be on the hook for with CapEx expenditures and perpetual licensing. Nutanix also offers flexible licensing options to cater to different business needs. However, I will say that organizations thinking about transitioning to Nutanix will have the unforeseen costs of potentially retraining personnel to work with and administer Nutanix infrastructure for existing VI admins if they don't already have the experience needed with the, the solution to administer it for production. VMware's licensing can be more complex, at least we could have said that uh, a few months back, up until recently when Broadcom combined all of the VMware catalog down to two SKUs. However, even though this helps with licensing, probably not a good thing when it comes to cost. And let me explain. Before the simplification by Broadcom of VMware licensing, they offered various additions that bundled features and software that would fit just about any environment or use case and could be tailored to specific requirements. However, now with only the two SKUs to choose from, it's inevitable that organizations will have to buy products or solutions that they have no need for, either if they purchase the vSphere Foundation licensing or the VMware Cloud Foundation product lines. This will, in the end, be more expensive for customers. Not only are they seeing licensing costs increase, the solutions that they are forced to buy are often solutions that they have no need for or the desire to purchase. But Again, they must due to the new Broadcom licensing and bundling of these products and solutions. Now, what about customer support and community? Well, I'll say this. I, I think that both Nutanix and VMware have strong customer support and active communities. If you look at both sides of the fence there, you're going to see a lot using the products 
a lot of community engagement. I would think, though, that VMware has a much larger community just due to the widespread use of the product and all of the community programs that uh, VMware is involved with. Dialing in a bit more on Nutanix support, Nutanix is known for good customer service and proactive support. Uh, they have a Nutanix Next community, they call it. Uh, that is a great resource for sharing knowledge and best practices. You can sign up for free, like if you're using something like the Nutanix Community Edition or CE Edition, you can not only download that for free, you can post questions, comments, and ask for help on the next community, which is really nice. Now to VMware Support. VMware Support Network is extensive. They have a large community, as we've already mentioned, numerous forums. Uh, VMware's TAM or Technical Account Manager, along with the VMware Solutions Architects, are readily available to provide support for enterprise customers. There is also healthy involvement with VMUG or the VMware User Group Organization. And this provides a large community of VMware professionals with community meetups, forums, and many other resources. Now, I want to take a moment as well to talk about what I feel like has been a nosedive in VMware support as of recently. As most of you are aware, in the last several weeks, VMware has been folded into the Broadcom support website. And I feel like the Broadcom support website is a total and complete nightmare. If you're trying to find anything VMware related, you have to click different menus, go to non-intuitive places in the menus. You have to uh, sign up for a site ID or retrieve your site ID, as I have seen many organizations struggle with, and it's just at the moment a complete and total mess. I know many great community leaders like William Lamb, who is very involved with the community, has posted specific links to find various resources, and that has been extremely helpful. But I think VMware support has drastically suffered just with the amount of resources that we were able to easily find on the VMware support website that are just absolutely difficult, challenging, or impossible to find on the Broadcom support website. So that's just my opinion there. You guys let me know for sure what your experience has been in the comments. Let's talk just for a moment about Nutanix versus VMware for the home lab in 2024. I think this is a great consideration for those running a home lab. Many have been running VMware vSphere in the home lab for years now with a VMUG subscription or after being presented with the vExpert award. I'm seeing a lot of individuals either writing about or blogging about or jumping into Discord saying that they are jumping over to things like Proxmox and XCPNG, or even Hyper-V from VMware vSphere. Is Nutanix a good fit for the home lab among these other solutions that ones are starting to utilize? I know Nutanix Community Edition or CE Edition has some fairly beefy requirements when it comes to running the solution, especially on the storage and RAM side. I know I recently attempted to get Nutanix CE running on a mini PC that I had recently reviewed and had all kinds of issues uh, along the storage requirements as well as the CVM virtual machine that it spins up for managing the solution. I think there's a good chance that many will have issues running it on some of the mini PC hardware that they may be pivoting over to. However, is Nutanix worth it to run in the home lab if you have the hardware available to do so. I think it is. And here is the main reason. Many of us ran VMware vSphere in a lab environment to gain skills in the enterprise that we need day to day. I think the adoption of Nutanix is going to literally explode over the coming months. Having Nutanix skills is going to be an extremely valuable skill to have as enterprise organizations pivot over to Nutanix as their virtualization platform of choice. I think ultimately many enterprise organizations will not be comfortable running something like Proxmox or XCPNG for the enterprise data center workloads just due to the lack of some of the support options there, backup solution integration, and the list goes on. Nutanix already has that enterprise polish, the enterprise integrations that many are looking for to feel comfortable with when they pivot over their production workloads. In fact, there was an interesting recent news tidbit as well as a large organization uh, called ComputerShare 
that moved something like 15,000 virtual machines over to Nutanix from VMware vSphere. And I think we're going to see many more new snippets like this, unfortunately for Broadcom, with their new pricing structure and pricing models. So which platform should you choose in 2024? Well, ultimately it depends on your specific needs and priorities. Nutanix excels in simplicity, performance, and hybrid cloud integration for enterprise workloads, making it a great choice for businesses looking for a streamlined solution that has that polish that they are used to with something like VMware vSphere. VMware, with its mature ecosystem and robust features, it also remains a top choice for enterprises needing advanced capabilities and flexibility if they are fully invested in VMware and look to not make any changes, then they must be willing to swallow the 10 or 15x price increases that we're seeing from Broadcom with those organizations. Well, thanks for watching, guys. If you found this comparison helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon for more updates. Drop your questions and comments below. I'd love to hear which platform you prefer and why. Are you playing around with Nutanix right now in your home lab with something like Nutanix CE Edition? Well, until next time, this is Brandon Lee signing off. Please do stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you guys on the next video. Thank you.